Welcome to the story of how China reinvented the space station with the Tiangong, a technological marvel that has left its predecessors in the dust. Tiangong, translating to Heavenly Palace, is not just another addition to the growing family of space stations, but a groundbreaking symbol of China's strides in space technology. This is the space race for the 21st century, and China is making sure they stand out. Space stations are nothing new. In fact, they've been around since the early 1970s. The very first was the Soviet Salyut in 1971, which was essentially a single module floating lab. Two years later, NASA followed suit with Skylab, built inside the upper stage of a Saturn V rocket. Fast forward to 1986, and the Soviet Union launched the Mir, the first modular space station, a precursor to today's International Space Station. The ISS, in many ways, feels like a spiritual successor to Mir, sharing similar cramped, utilitarian designs and a structure that's far more submarine than Starship. Decades passed with minimal aesthetic or technological evolution in space station design. While the ISS was a monumental achievement in international cooperation, it's hard to say the same for innovation. Now, in 2023, China has flipped the script with Tiangong, a sleek, futuristic structure that looks like it came straight from a scientific movie. Launched in 2021, Tiangong consists of three interconnected modules. Tianhe, the core command module, Wentian, the lab and crew module, and Mengtian, an additional laboratory. Together, they form a T-shaped space station that's 55 meters long and 39 meters wide, orbiting around 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. What took the ISS over 10 years to assemble, China managed in just over two years, an astonishing feat of engineering. But the story of Tiangong starts much earlier, with China's long-term plan for space dominance, known as Project 921. This project, initiated in the 1990s, is China's blueprint for space exploration and development. It was divided into three phases, with Tiangong representing the culmination of over 30 years of planning. Phase 1 of Project 921 began in 1999 with the launch of the Long March 2F rocket and Shenzhou spacecraft. By 2003, China sent its first Taikonaut into orbit, marking the start of Phase 2. This phase involved testing various space station concepts through small experimental modules, practicing docking maneuvers and conducting spacewalks with their own extravehicular suits. In 2016, China upped the ante with the Long March 7 rocket and Tianzhou cargo spacecraft, designed to transport supplies to future space stations. All of this was in preparation for Phase 3, the assembly and operation of the Tiangong Station, their heavenly palace. So, why did China feel the need to build their own space station? Well, for starters, they were banned from participating in the International Space Station. In 2011, the US Congress passed a Department of Defense Act that prohibited NASA from collaborating with China, citing national security and human rights concerns. In essence, China was barred from the ISS, so they decided to build their own. A classic, fine, we'll do it ourselves, move. One of the first things that stands out when you look at Tiangong is how much more modern and spacious it feels compared to the ISS. Although both space stations have a similar outer diameter, around 4.2 meters, Tiangong's internal layout is much more open and minimalist. Gone are the cluttered pipes, wires, and equipment sticking out from every surface 
like on the ISS. Instead, Tiangong has hidden much of its technology behind sleek white panels, giving the station a clean, futuristic look. The design is so modern that it almost feels more like an Apple store than a space station. The reason for this clean aesthetic? Technology has advanced. Much of Tiangong's systems, like communications and data transfer, are wireless, reducing the need for miles of tangled cables. This means more open space for the crew to move around, and it gives the station a distinctly futuristic vibe. Let's break down Tiangong's key components. Tianhe, the core module of the Tiangong space station, was launched in April 2021 and serves as the heart of the station. Weighing 20 tons, Tianhe provides life support, navigation, and power for the entire station. Inside, it features crew quarters, a control center, and docking nodes for both crewed and cargo spacecraft. It also houses a 10-meter-long robotic arm used for maintenance tasks. The Wentian Lab module, launched in July 2022, expands the station with additional crew accommodations and lab space for scientific experiments. Wentian is equipped with solar panels extending 55 meters in length, generating a significant amount of energy for the station. The third module, Mengtian, was added in November to 2022. Like Wentian, it functions as a research lab with a primary focus on experiments in materials science, fluid physics, and space technology. China's speed in constructing Tiangong is nothing short of impressive. It took NASA and Russia two years just to make the ISS habitable, whereas Tiangong became fully operational within months. The construction process was streamlined by the heavy lift Long March 5B rocket, one of the most powerful rockets in the world. However, China's approach with the 5B has sparked controversy. Unlike most rockets, which discard their lower stages into the ocean, the Long March 5B's first stage re-enters the atmosphere uncontrolled, raining debris over populated areas. In 2022, this very thing happened when debris fell over Indonesia and Malaysia, though thankfully, no one was hurt. Tiangong is not just a finished product, but the foundation for future Chinese space endeavors. China plans to use the station as a base for assembling larger spacecraft, like crewed missions to the Moon or Mars. There's even talk of adding a large modular Chinese space telescope that will dock with Tiangong for maintenance, similar to how the Hubble works with the ISS. And that's not all. China is developing a next-gen robotic arm that could potentially assemble or even repair large structures in space. The current 10-meter arm could eventually grow in length and capability, rivaling the Canadian-built Canadarm that the ISS uses. Tiangong is more than just a symbol of Chinese technological prowess. It represents a broader shift in the global balance of power in space. For decades, the US and Russia were the undisputed leaders of space exploration. Now China is staking its claim, not just with Tiangong, but with their ambitious lunar and Mars missions on the horizon. As we look ahead to the next phase of human exploration, one thing is clear. China's journey into space is just beginning, and the rest of the world better keep up. <laughs>